Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. From what dear you may find out, certain people not like me. Everyone for us by that thing now. Makes true me, I do it like Nike. But me not fear no guy now. No matter how hard them as my girl. Me just a go and do me thing now. Me just a do it like Nike. 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 Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by the Bahamas Out Island Promotion Board, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Fine Threads, First Caribbean Bank, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, Prince Masters, and Tropical Gyros. Good afternoon, good day. It is Talking Heads Thursday on Guardian Radio 96.9. This is your boy Pearly in the house. It's so good to be here with you all today. I hope you didn't miss me. It's been a long week, huh? So what's happening, everybody? You good? Everybody healthy? You ready for the holidays tomorrow, Labor Day? Go see the parades. Let's, in, let's celebrate our workers of the country. Tomorrow, Sir Randall Fox Day. I still ain't used to saying Sir Randall Fox Day. I'm so used to Labor Day, but it's Sir Randall Fox Day, so... Let's get ready for it. So before we get, I have two special guests. You know, I like when the pretty ladies come with me. So I have two special guests. We have lots to talk about today. I hear a little drama in the House of Assembly. So we're going to talk about that. And I have another special guest coming in right after these ladies. So let's first look at what's going on in The Guardian. PM, we had little success on inflation. Tell me about it. Davis admits government's measure failed to drive down prices. Let me go to the food so you remember that. David Slams pinned out over error in analyzing budget. Thompson raises concern over the $500 million IDB back loan. And Davis defends government public sector salary review plan. I hear some drama with that too, but we'll talk about that soon. Business section, government to tackle high cost of goods via trade logistics, says PM. National Trade Facilitation Committee work could eventually lower the cost of goods by one-third. What is eventually? We, we use these funny words, soon to come, eventually. I, I want to know when. Thompson government continues to ignore its own fiscal targets. Uh, Ministry of Work awards over $2 million in roadway contracts. You know, I want to comment on this. We need, is there a road in Nassau that don't have a pothole in it? Is there any road in Nassau without a pothole? Then maybe we should fix them potholes first and then. Marks the International Bazaar will become trade hub for Africa, Bahamas, and Caribbean. And finally, submerged evacuator of Great Exuma Spark safety concerns. Yeah, when something there sink. So what's happening? We got two young ladies here today. We're going to talk environmental issues. We're going to talk some fun things about the issues, but I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So let's go with the lady to my right. Good day. My name is Heather Brockbank, and I'm the outreach officer at Brief, which is the Bahamas Reef Environment Educational Foundation. Brockbank. Yes. Where's that from? It's a British last name. British. Do you? I mean, he's. We had an interesting conversation. We can bring that up in here. And my next guest. Yes, and my name is Crystal Darling Sargent. I am the communications officer at the Bahamas Reef Environment Educational Foundation. Brief. Uh, brief. Bahamas mm-hmm. Reef Environment Educational Foundation. B R E E F. B R. So mm-hmm. we're here with Brief, and we're talking about two things, or maybe three things, that are coming up with Brief. Um, and you know, brief you're in, is about the sea, right? Yes, ocean conservation, one hundred percent, all the way. Okay, so what's happening? So we have some snorkeling thing happening um, later on. So, Heather, you're going to tell me about that? Yeah. So this entire month, we are celebrating World Oceans Month. We just received the proclamation from the Prime Minister de- declaring that. June 3rd through June 8th shall be National Ocean Protections Week. And so we're really happy to receive that. And we're really happy to share with our audience that this week especially and throughout the month of June, we want you to really focus on what your oceans provide for you and how you can be helpful towards not only the ocean, but your environment that surrounds your ocean, our coasts, 
and our livelihoods and communities. And so we invite you to come experience this ocean for yourself with us on Saturday, June 8th, which is officially recognized as World Oceans Day. And we are going to be out on Sea Beach Promenade, which is the beach across from Sapodilla Restaurant on West Bay Street. And we are going to be hosting a public snorkel from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. So what that means is that you can come out. Anybody over the age of eight can participate in the snorkel. We provide you with all the gear. And you don't really technically have to know how to swim or be a strong swimmer. You just have to be comfortable in the water, and we work from you from there. So you got. So in other words, you got a life vest for me. Yeah, yeah, everybody wears a life vest. Everybody, it's mandatory. I even wear a life vest. <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, I would tell people, anybody who went to Zavis, I went to Zavis, should mm-hmm. we know how to swim. So mm-hmm. we, that was one of the one of the um, P, P lessons. We had swimming lessons. So mm-hmm. uh, Betty Cole taught me how to swim. What? I, <laughs> I think she taught half You're the country how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal be here now. <laughs> so anybody can come out. How many are you... Have, this is the first one. Have you done this before? So this is our first public snorkel of the year. The weather has been very iffy this year, uh-huh. but hopefully this Saturday we can get everybody out and into the water. I mean, have you done this in years past, or? Yeah, we usually do monthly snorkels. And how many people do you normally get to them? We usually get around forty people to wow. attend. Okay. So it's definitely first come first serve. I gotcha. Yeah. So it's safe. You got you got um, boats out there. You're gonna have. Um, lifeguards, everything? Or? So a lot of our volunteers are CPR certified, okay. as well as some of our um, lifeguards, sorry, some of our volunteers are lifeguard certified as well. Okay. So we definitely have a group that knows how to keep people safe in the water. Okay. Mm-hmm. And our team at Brief has been working with children in the water with our summer camps for years now. Yeah. So we're always excited to take them out and always excited to make sure that they stay safe. So now you say outside Sapodil. Doesn't everybody know where Sapodil is? So we're talking out west. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so via Google Maps, it's uh-huh. named Sea Beach Promenade. So if you're not quite sure, search up Sea Beach mm-hmm. Promenade on um, Google Maps. And I know most people know it as the Dikery Shack or the Dak Shack. Okay. Because the Dikery Shack's right on that corner on yes. that bend yeah. right yeah. after you pass Sun Fun. It's before the caves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's before the caves, mm-hmm. out west, opposite Sapodilla Restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, meet there. We start promptly at 9 a.m. So you should get yes. there like 8, 8.30 to get your gear, get prepared and all that to get mm-hmm. into the water. Mm-hmm. And we're going to look at some beautiful reefs. Yep. Yes. Okay. This is this sounds fun. And fish. And And fish. I love them. Can, can I bring a line and throw a no, line No, please don't. No, I can't throw a line over. <laughs> we don't recommend fishing where people are so north. No, I understand. <laughs> I know that's true. That's true. So, people, it's, it's Saturday. It's brief sponsored. It's World Oceans Day. And, you know, I'm, I've been an advocate about this because I saw a story one time about this plastic island that's bigger than the state of Texas in the Pacific Ocean. So, all that has made me more aware of, of what's going on. And, and particularly for the Bahamas, we need to be careful because... Uh, I think uh, our third fishing, our third um, largest largest major. industry is fishing and yes. agriculture yes. and fisheries. Yes. And yep. We do a lot of fishing. And I had some people here the other day that's doing a deep dive drop and they're doing mm-hmm. fishing for some exotic snappers and, and groupers and all that. So it mm-hmm. opened my eyes to the beauty and the wonders of our oceans and yes. our waters here in the Bahamas. So yes. it's something that we have to be careful of to keep our waters. Don't be throwing your stuff in the sea. Don't be gonna, then you know put them in the bag and put them in the garbage because we gotta pre- preserve them for our kids and my grandson gotta be able to enjoy the ocean. So Saturday, June eighth, it's mm-hmm. World Ocean Day. It's a public snorkel. It's a wonderful experience. You don't have to be the best swimmer in the world. So get there early because there's only a limited amount you can take, right? Yep. And how many is that you can take? Um, we're gonna be out there for the allotted time yeah. slot and oh, so people shows. Come we just in do rotations. We do yeah. rotations. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Until twelve noon. Come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people come on out. Let's enjoy this. Let's have a fun time. Let's enjoy. We famous. We we go on the beach and stay in the sun all day. You know. <laughs> we <laughs> so, like to take pictures. Yeah, we take a lot of pictures. So let's come out there. Let's enjoy the beach. Let's yeah. come out and see some of the beauties of our. And we have some of the most beautiful reefs in the world. In the world. Mm-hmm. And we don't take a look at them enough ourselves. And I've had an opportunity to look at some reefs before, and I, I'm, I was just amazed. So it'll be good. So Saturday, this Saturday, so tomorrow's Labor Day, the 7th, the next day is Saturday, just yes. in case you ain't sure what day of the week it is. 
and let's get out there and, su and support them. But you have another event you want to talk about as well, correct? Yes. Yes. So it's summertime and it's summer camp season. Okay. And Brief is hosting our three summer camps that we do every year. So we're doing one summer sea camp on New Providence, one in Eleuthera, and one in Andrus. Okay. The one in New Providence um, is 125 It's for campers ages 8 to 14. You had 14. to throw that price out so fast? I just want to make sure. <laughs> you, big, you, see, you should big them up first and then you say, well, you know, it's a little fee. Well, let's talk about what our uh, summer camps include. Yeah. So, yeah. as I was saying, it's for <laughs> campers from 8 to 14 years old, and okay. we're really going to have a lot of hands-on activities. We like to think of it as an engaging space where they can learn and have fun at the same time. So we're going to have opportunities for them to go snorkeling, really dip their toes in the water, and really have an intro to what's under our surface and why they should protect our oceans. So we're going to be covering all topics marine conservation while having fun. And this is going to be held at Adastra Gardens. Okay, from that, that's my question. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. So registration forms can be found on our website at brief.org. And mm -hmm. they can be emailed to outreach at brief. And all those instructions are also on the web page. So, so you'll, you'll take field trips to the beach? Um, yeah. yeah, snorkeling and see that. So the whole thing is is an educational process to teach to teach young people, eight to fourteen year olds, what the ocean is all about yes. and how we can serve yeah. yes. can conserve our ocean. Fish, mm -hmm. coral fish, reefs, coral everything. Reefs, yeah. yes. And it's an even better experience with the Luther camps, which are free to Luther residents and Andrus residents, because those ecosystems are just flourishing in a Luther and Andrus. We have the Andrus Great Barrier Reef that we take our kids out to with the Andrus camp which is going to be held from July 29th through the 31st. And likewise, with the Luther Camp, it's going to be from July 15th through 18th. And with the Luther Camp, kids can see those pristine waters and amazing ecosystems that Luther is known for yes. and really learn what's actually in their community around them that they may not have known was there before and how it really supports their communities and really get benefits our country as a whole. Now, the Andrus Great Barrier Reef, is that's the second largest reef in the world? The I think. Third. It's the third. I knew it used to be number one. Well, before they discovered that it was number one before, or it was always number three? I'm not sure. And who, do you know who's number one and, and two? I think um, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Australia, though. I think and that's number one. And then there's one, one in, the, in the Pacific somewhere. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But so, but, but a lot of people don't know that that is something that people come from all over the world to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, as, and, and we as Bahamians, we don't take advantage of what we offer. The foreigners to come in and enjoy all our goodness, and we don't. So, <laughs> so kids in Andres, you know, but now you say residents of Andres, right? And you know, some of us to ship our children off to Elutra, to Exoma, to Andres for the, for the summer. I, I, are you, will you allow kids who are spending the summer with their family? Yeah, so we often get a lot of kids that are just staying on the island for summer okay. with family, and mm -hmm. we always accept them. Wonderful. Let me see if my granny. <laughs> so, all right. So, Saturday coming is is the is the public snorkel. So, we want people to enjoy that, and then we have and tell us again the dates for New Providence for Governors Harbor and for Andros. So, for New Providence, that's going to be June twenty fourth through twenty eighth. Registration deadline coming up on the tenth. Um, and it's going to be held at Adastra Gardens. Yeah, Adastra Gardens from nine a.m. to three p.m. Um, with and the Adastra Gardens in Chippenham for those who don't know that you know you're right yes. in my backyard. Yep, and we have all of those that information on our flyer. You can find on our socials, Brief242, or on our website. But the Luther Camp is going to be held from the 15th through the 18th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Luther at the Haynes Library. You can contact Althea at the Haynes Library in order to sign up. Okay. And the Kamalami Camp is going to be the 28th, 9th of July through the 31st of July. And you can contact Kamalami Key, who we're partnering with that summer camp with every year in order to register your camper. Yeah, Lynn, the mommy key is Andrus, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. And, and Crystal, mm -hmm. you have one more thing you want to tell us about, right? Yes. So this year, we're also celebrating, at brief, our 10-year anniversary of the Coral Reef Sculpture Garden okay. and Coral Nursery at Clifton. Okay. So this... So at Clifton. Yes. Yes. It's at Clifton. It's a, well, it's in the... Water located. off of, yeah, that's just the location for okay. reference. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, so we've had this, the sculpture, this um, sculpture garden was built in 2014. Um, and we've collaborated with Bahamian artists and international artists to um, make it into what it is. Okay. And over the years, it's just flourished. At first, we only um, 
was able to find about 14 different species of fish ever since we've installed the nursery, which works as a artificial reef, okay. the sculptures. Um, we've seen that flourish and grow to over 114 different species of fish and coral in that area. Super. So it is thriving right now and very beautiful. And we actually are planning to have um, some events it's this summer, some snorkels, public snorkels there, okay. where people will be able to come and experience the sculpture garden, the underwater sculpture garden, um, free of charge. Um, yeah. So, it's so, so oh, that sounds like that sounds exciting. Because yeah. I. I I think I've seen it on. Was it a James Bond movie? I'm not sure. Oh, it was on some movie. I saw. The, I saw the sculpture on. Yeah. So a lot of so a lot of uh, famous Instagrammers and social media and influencers, underwater photographers. Yes. underwater photographers. Yes. Like they, it's a it's a place that, that they TikTok. go. It's like a bucket yeah. list item. Like yeah. they have to visit it. They have to take pictures. So you go online and you type in coral reef underwater sculpture garden Bahamas. Then you have a ton of pictures it's on from TikTok people from as well. all over the world. Yes. TikTok, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, everywhere. People always come to see it, and it is a marvel because it is the largest under our ocean atlas is the largest underwater sculpture in the world. Oh, she weighs twenty tons. Wow. Uh, yeah, and she's about eighteen feet tall. So, so it was built and then dropped in, or it was put together underwater. So yeah, they yeah. they had to layer it. Okay. Yeah. Because I would just drop she's it, just beautiful. drop right now, boom. <laughs> I don't know how yeah. safe that would be. <laughs> no, I mean, if you drop it in and nobody underneath it, just drop it in the water, boom. <laughs> yeah, but it, it took a lot of effort. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of time um, to install as well and planning. Yeah. Ooh, so know. we are proudly celebrating 10 years of our sculpture garden. And he Heather could talk a little bit more about um, the biodiversity there mm -hmm. and how it really um, helps to sustain fisheries in that area. Yeah. One thing we wanted to note about our sculpture garden is that we really like to use it as our underwater classroom. Okay. So it's a place that we know is always there and designated to us that we can really take our students out. And we know that they're going to see something, coral reefs, the corals that we have out there on our coral trees. We currently have two coral trees where we're growing endangered staghorn coral. Okay. And we also have 66 reef balls kind of leading up to those sculptures, okay. which help with coral growth on the ground as well. So we really have a lot of modules for kids to ask, hey, what's that? Or what does that help with? And as well, before they go in the water, they get briefings as well about what they can expect to see and how it helps our oceans having that coral nursery out there. And corals take a very long time to grow back if something happens, right? Yeah, and out there on our tree, we have the fastest growing coral, but it still takes months to grow, even to like the size of a hand where we can outplant it onto a reef. Wow. And so that's why when we talk about the importance of protecting our corals with these underwater heat waves coming up in these hot summers, yeah. it's not just a joke. It's really, really important that we do are mindful of what our corals are experiencing and how we can protect them or be more mindful of what's happening. We have a call on there. Call you on there. How you doing? Hi, Pearly. Hi, darling. How are you? I'm fine. What's up? And good day to your guest. Good day. Good day. Um, what I wanted to ask is that you guys are saying Andros. I'm from Andros. But I want people to realize Andrews is not like you probably Andrews just is one three, sitting island. Three, Andrews is three islands, basically. Thank you. Yeah. Three separate islands. Yes. So when you say Andrews, can you be more specific, please? No problem. Okay. So it's right off of Stanyard Creek, um, and you can take... Okay, okay, so it's in the North Andrews. North Andrews, yeah. North yeah. Andrus, yes. Stanyard Creek, okay. yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And the, the one that you're having on Saturday coming... Is there a price? No, that's free. No, that's free. That's free. Okay, thank you so very much. All right, so you coming on Saturday? Of course I come. And she said you yes, come. bring your family and friends. We can we we snorkel together then. Yeah, she didn't say I can't bring a spare. She said I can't bring no line. Whoa. You, <laughs> you can't bring no spare either. <laughs> so you're saying that she didn't say that clearly. Uh, Crystal, she can bring a spare? No. No spare. you got the whole holiday to fish. Uh, what, what, so. what, what about a fishing bag then? What about the bag? You know, fishing areas. That's a that's a non-fishing area. You can't fish when you're snorkeling. You can take pictures. What we could do is at 1230, me and you could fish after everybody go. How that sound? Listen, listen, don't challenge me because my line and bucket always in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I see you, you can catch me fishing. Thank you. <laughs> take care, my love. So, anything else you want to tell the public before I, like, like you got to say, so I tell you, make, like, bread and roll? <laughs> um, no, we just want people to know the importance of World Oceans Month this yes. month. 
And check out our website to keep up to date with all of the things we're doing. We're constantly striving to promote the conservation of our marine environment that sustains our way of life as Bahamians. Mm -hmm. And so you can keep up with our journey at brief.org or you can stay up to date with our socials on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn at Brief242. LinkedIn too. Cool. LinkedIn too. Yes. We're for the professionals. So well. Bahamians, Brief it does wonderful work for our country. and These are the people that make it possible, that try to keep it possible for us to have a good time on, on, on all, all summer. I'm going on the beach tomorrow, and 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 you know, and I'll be out there Saturday. So it's good to see that you you keeping up your work, and I want to congratulate Brief on his work. And I'm so happy to see Crystal. I haven't seen. I got to tell somebody I saw you. Please do. <laughs> I did. So thank you so much for coming. This is Pearly on Talking Heads Thursdays on Garden Ready 96.9. When I come back, we can have a special guest. We can talk about the drama in the House of Assembly, and we'll have a good time. We'll be right back. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Is it a burger? No. Is it pizza? Come on, man. It's KFC. Whatever the crunch this is, it's delicious. New, the Kentucky Cheetah Sandwich. Crispy chicken topped with marinara sauce, mozzarella, and pepperoni. Order your Cheetah Sandwich now at KFCNassau.com or at your favorite KFC restaurant today. It's new and it's radical. KFC, it's finger licking good. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, De Gregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion and at your feet. Ignite your leadership capabilities, expand your vision, and chart the path to a bright future at the CIBC Caribbean Ignite Leadership Conference, 27th of June at Bahamar, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Join Sarah Kunst, a venerated entrepreneur who has worked at Apple and Red Bull. Sarah is a Forbes 30 Under 30 Future Innovator and has been honored by the Wall Street Journal. Also hear about the leadership journey of Anthony Ferguson and Crystal Rutherford Ferguson. This event is designed for senior business executives and seasoned entrepreneurs register at cibcfcib.com forward slash ignite to secure your space only successful registrants will be acknowledged join us for the ignite leadership conference june 27th at bahamar this is guardian radio 96.9 fm fresh news smart talk 
Colle. And welcome back to Talking Heads Thursday with Pearlie, 96.9 Guardian Radio. Th so wonderful to see Crystal and Heather from Brief. Um, but now we got to get in some meat. My special guest today is the re-elected Secretary General of the Free National Movement, uh, Safan Rool. Welcome, Safan. Good afternoon, Pearlie. Thank you for being here on 96.9 Guardian Radio. I wouldn't want to be anyplace else right now. Oh, keep talking. Flag will get you everywhere. <laughs> Good afternoon, Bahamas. Let me just quick get these texts because I get some people just rob. I don't read the texts. Earl, Pearly, what about sharks at the snorkel? They've done it there a number of times, and they take every precaution to make sure. And I think that's why Crystal told me no fishing or no sparing out there to keep everybody safe. And they have um, certified um, um, lifeguards and everything out there. So it should be pretty safe. Great show as usual, Pearly. Tell the cruise ship stop dumping their number two in our waters. They could dump the number two in the Mississippi River. You ever seen the Mississippi River? They might be probably done full of that. <laughs> now our fish eating the number two, and we eating the fish. So now we eating the number two. Per <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> We're talking about crabs. Or sh okay, so you're talking about the Great Rally of Beef, Australia's number one, and then the one of Belize, then the Bahamas. And the last text. What's up, Early? It's a great day in the Bahamas. I see Joe Beth Kobe to answer Pintard on Wednesday. She said after the convention, she would answer him. I'm waiting on a response. Dr. Sands, don't mind him. He is a fake. Okay, so FNM just came out of the convention. Mm -hmm. Landslide victory for Michael Pintard. Yep. How did you feel? Did you have a landslide victory as well? I, I, I believe that I had <laughs> a, a, a landslide victory. Um, you know, I had a formidable opponent, yeah. a really good um, FNM um, woman who um, I've spoken to since the result. Okay. And we uh, were on good terms before and on good terms now. Wonderful. Um, a democratic process. Um, we went through that good exercise. Um, I am of Cat Island descent. Um, she is a Cat Islander, Fine. and it, it was such a joy for to know that either one of us yeah. would get the position. But you guys didn't get into the row like <laughs> Dr. Minnis and Dr. Pintard's uh, cohorts did. And I'm not, because technically Dr. Mr. Pintard and Dr. Minnis didn't have any kind of fussing, but the cohorts did have some fussing. Who all were elected? Who are the, the top, I mean, down to, the I guess, the vice chairman? Who are the elected officers? Um, well, what we had, uh, obviously, we had the success of Michael Clifton Pintar as the leader. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he had my support, mm -hmm. and he still ha does enjoy my support. And I was happy to see him return as the leader. Okay. Um, the deputy leader, Shannon Don Cartwright, went in unopposed. Okay. And delighted and happy that that happened as well. Yes. The chairman, uh, Dr. Dwayne Sands, um, had my full support. Okay. I'm happy to continue to work with him in the development of, uh, and progress of our party. And he, he won by a tremendous... Last time, I think he only won about, by, against Ellsworth Johnson again. He won by 12 votes. A very this convincing time was a lot margin bigger. this time. Okay. Um, no, no question about it. Enjoys the support of the wide base in the party. And um, it's because of his good work um, and his work ethic um, that he was able to have a convincing win this time. And then, you know, a couple of months ago, we lost a dear friend. I mean, a really good friend of mine. And I still feel for Don Sanders, who was deputy chair. Who has replaced them, and who are the two deputy chairs now? Well, nobody could replace Don. Of Zons. course not. Of course you can't replace um, them. Um, and, and, you know, we feel that loss, and we will continue to feel that of voice. Of course. Um, but elected in the post of deputy chairman, we have Travis Robinson and Chanel Ferguson. Okay. Um, both former parliamentarians, yep. um, now lending their experience from, that, from being parliamentarians and, and party officers in the past. And they've come back to really enrich the entire organization. And then you have five, five vice chairmen. Five wonderful vice chairmen. 
I will start with um, Denari Roll because okay. he's a roll, and I told all the rolls <laughs> on the ticket, every roll would get through. Vote roll. And that, ha that has happened <laughs> in this convention. Okay. Uh, so um, whilst we may not be biological family, all roles are connected. Yes. And so Denari Roll, uh, D'Angelo Ferguson, MCM David Thompson. Out of Grand Bahama. Yes. Okay. Lincoln Deal. Okay. And there's a fifth person, uh, Jamal Moss, former, former senator. Senate. Okay. Who again brings the experience from being a parliamentarian and a party officer, former torchbearer president, um, all of that to the role of vice chairman. And then, of course, the white soy man and not opposing yes, treasurer. Yes, yes. And, you know, I will have to say, my two deputy secretaries general. <laughs> Listen, Christy Campbell and Pakisha Parker Edgecombe, along with the other secretaries in, in our uh -huh. core, they're going to be dynamic. They've already proven themselves, and they have so much to offer. So you're the only, you're the only male in the secretarial core, right? Yes, you got, yes. You got your hands full. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. Capable. And I believe after I would have um, given up this role, I believe that there would be a very strong female to take the lead um, and I hope that I can support one of them. And I listened to Debian Sanz, who's on this show yesterday, and he said 37% of the elected officers of the Free National Movement are not females? Listen, we don't play. Okay. In the Free National Movement, we are intentional about, about, about we, what we want to do. We had a women's association election a few months ago. Okay. About a month ago now. Okay. And there were some dynamic women who won their posts, and there were some dynamic women who didn't win those okay. posts. And they've offered themselves at this convention. Some of them were successful again, okay. some not. There's a place for people in the free national movement, male and female, who want to contribute to the FNM and indeed to the betterment of the Bahamas. I had an opportunity to see clips of um, the leader Pintard's um, accept. I call it acceptance speech at the convention, and one of one of the things that and, and the people said that there was a there was a sense of division in the party during the election. How, how are you feeling that unity, and what what are you going to do to to unify the party and bring all those who were in the Doctor Minnis camp? And you know now you got the the Pintard camp, you got the Minnis camp, you got the Ingram camp, you got the uh, some other. How, what are you going to do to bring all these camps together to be prepared to to fight against the progressive little party in the next general election? for whenever it's called, two years or less. As we extend the hand, we have to be genuine. Those of us who have been successful have to be genuine in our approach to those who have not been. Okay. And those who have not been successful uh, for whatever post they want to contest or whoever they supported, they have to be intentional. And this is a word that I'm going to use quite often. Intentional about their willingness and their desire to be FNM, to serve in the FNM in whatever role and capacity that they have. Um, because the Bahamas needs the free national movement to step up its game, to give good advice in, in quarters where we need to give advice, and to be the opposition that we need to be. Okay. Um, not just to oppose for opposing sake. And so we need to, we need to be unified in that respect. Mm -hmm. But we also have to be mature on both sides. Mm -hmm. To offer and extend the hand. I didn't say the olive branch. To offer and extend the, the hand. hand. Yes. And to pull each other together. Has that started? Oh, yes. Okay. I know you said you spoke to your opponent. And, you're, yes. and you expect to get her involved in some other things? Most, most certainly. Okay. She has brilliant ideas. And um, we would be not better off. Um, um, if we were to um, abandon persons like that. And in my talking to people and trying to get a sense of what happened so for this conversation, a lot of people have been saying, this feels like 92, this feels like 92. What do they mean by that? Well, I'm not that. Um, in 92, I was in, in grade five. Oh, boy, okay? okay, okay. At Queen's College, I was in grade five. We won't hold the school against you. <laughs> yeah. you know, we won't hold that one I had to put you. that plug in there. Yeah. <laughs> but I do remember the... the the fever in the country, even at that age. Uh -huh. And I saw um, persons of my parents' age and, and my elder brother's age who were so excited about what was going on. And, mm -hmm. and, and I believe that we're getting there. Okay. I think a lot, there's a lot of hope when we think of a Michael Pintard uh, prime ministerialship. Okay. Now, the budget debate is going on now. And I guess there's been some drama in the House of Assembly today. Are you aware of what happened? Or you got any idea what went on? Well, I was... Uh, braving the traffic to get here. Okay. And so I was only able to hear a, a bit of it. Okay. I, I caught up somewhat. Okay. Um, and I believe that there's been a live uh, Facebook Live okay. um, by the leader of the opposition Press conference going speaking on. more about this. Okay. I was able to see in the House of Assembly online um, the speaker um, 
and the Member of Parliament for St. Anne's and the Member of Parliament for Freetown speak to what had taken place earlier. Mm. One of the things that I heard uh, Michael Pintard say um, in his live was that he believed that the Speaker um, exercises bias in the, in the exercise of her duties. Okay. Um, and the Speaker should be neutral no matter which party you're with. The speaker should be neutral. Okay. The speaker should be seen to be uh, to apply neutrality um, in the exercise of their duties. I think it's up for the Bahamian people to take a look at the footage, um, the previous footage, and trust me, more to come, and then make a decision um, if the speaker is indeed exercising neutrality in the exercise of her duties. Is the house back in now, or is it still on? I believe the house is back in now. I, I know when I when I stopped watching, there was a member of parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini, um, who was um, continuing with his contribution. Okay. Have you had an opportunity to look at any parts of the the, 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 the budget? I've seen some um, um, responses uh -huh. to the budget. Okay. Um, I, like many others, will continue to watch, and I like to watch the reruns okay. um, at the end of the day of the contributions. Okay. Um, there will be a thorough um, review and analysis and response to the budget by the Free National Movement, okay. um, as usual. Okay. Um, and not just um, knocks on the budget, but also providing some ideas okay. um, and some... some some alternatives to that would help the Bahamian people rather than hurt. Okay. Let's get back to your convention. And, and one of the things that uh, talked about unity um, and talk about preparing yourselves for the next general election, what, what, what are some of the things that you would be doing in terms of unifying the party? Um, are there any new initiatives you're going to be going? Are you revamping your, your shadow uh, ministries? Or, or, or what? So I would think that... Where there, there are a lot of people that came from the, from the Dr. Minnis camp that has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. And in, in order for the free national movement to want to, to be able to win the next government, you got to bring all those in because you need every vote that you can get. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you're going to do to, to unify, um, to reorganize, revamp, re-energize the free national movement? Well, what we've done uh, is we've decided that we're going to refresh the <clears throat> committee's Okay. Um, aspect of, of, of the party. And what that is, is we have some standing and ad hoc committees. Um, we have some shadow ministry committees and working groups. And so what we're going to do is we're going to throw that net out again okay. to get people involved. Um, people will be able to sign up and be actively involved in these various committees. And it will not be Nassau-centric. We're going to embrace our brothers and sisters who are part of the movement in Grand Bahama and the Family Islands. We're going to make it um, make ways for it to be very accessible for us to get information from them and to disseminate information to them. Okay. So that's the first thing. Okay. What we want to do, the first thing that we have to do is we need to stop these definitions of who's a Minis FNM, who's okay. a Pintard FNM. I got you. Because I ain't that. I'm okay. an FNM. Okay. And that's the first thing that we have to do. Okay. We have to realize that we are FNMs. Okay. Okay, yeah, we may have supported somebody in a convention, but the convention's over. Yeah. And so now all we see is FNM. Okay. And so what we have to do, knowing that there were divisions, okay. um, and there may still be some hurt and there still may be some gloating or whatever there is, we need to begin to let that subside. You know, Bahamian is like the bride when yeah, they win now. that's fine. Yeah. But we have to begin to let that subside because you could gloat as much as you want, but you don't need to gloat in opposition. Okay. We need to, glo we need to get to a point where we're moving fast forward into really becoming the next government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And so that gloating is going to end. The convention is, is finished. We will now extend hands. Those persons have a place. They have a voice. Um, and they will be able to contribute. And if any of them feel as if there's anybody trying to shut them out, I'm the secretary general of the organization. They can reach out to me, and they can let me know what's happening. And I will bring it to the attention of the parties that be. I will bring it to the attention of the Central Council. We need every single sensible, capable hand to help us do what we need to do for the Bahamian people. Now, I know there was a little, uh, some drama just before the convention in terms of election of officers. So I saw notices canceling some elections. Are they going to continue? Are they going to happen now or they're going to go by the way? We are the most democratic political organization in the Bahamas. Okay. That's a fact. Uh -huh. And so we will give out the uh, adequate and proper notices as per the Constitution and our bylaws for the resumption of those um, nominations and elections 
of various different constituencies. What we want, um, Pearlie, uh -huh. is not just to have these nominations and elections. We want persons to know in their various constituencies that they could come out and get involved. Okay. okay. And so come out, when you see the notices about meetings, get involved in your constituency, FNM, constituency associations, so that you can be able to provide insight about what's happening in your constituency and also receive information about what the Free National Movement intends to do and is doing in your constituency. Got a couple of texts. Good afternoon, Pearlie. There's only one camp, and that's the FNM camp. It felt like 92 on Saturday. The fire is lit. The speaker is supposed to be the head of the legislative branch of the government. But unfortunately, this week and many others have acted as an extension of the executive branch of the government, and it's an overt attack on democracy. Any comment on that? I believe that that speaker should go to the that person should go to the head of the class. <laughs> um, we have elected persons to go into the House of Parliament to speak on our behalf, um, to make certain observations and to be heard, and not to to seemingly be stifled mm -hmm. um, by the person who should protect. Uh, their right to speak on behalf of their constituents. And so I, I believe it's undemocratic, um, okay. some of the stuff that we've been hearing and seeing. I don't want to um, um, particularly say that the speaker is being undemocratic. I would let the persons in the House of Parliament okay. speak to their experiences. Uh, they know the rules. Um, and I believe that the leader of the opposition has said uh, quite enough today um, about his experience uh, and the people of Marcos uh, City should be um, outraged and up in arms um, about what has happened to him today. Okay. Pearlie, I'm glad we are talking about women, but why so much emphasis on female numbers as opposed to the best qualified candidates? Mm -hmm. Also, will the FNM roll out an initiative for men only like the PRP did when they offered business loans to women only? I think that person, that second would be a bit facetious. But why so much emphasis on just uh, having more women involved? I mean, personally, I think that we don't have enough women involved in politics. But because the nature of politics in the Bahamas, a lot of women, husbands or boyfriends or significant others, don't want them involved because of the things you hear. But why is there so much emphasis in, in being braggadocious about having 37% of the elected officers of women? Why so much emphasis on women? The fact of the matter is, and I, I can't put my hand on the report right now, I believe there's a United Nations report. Okay. Um, and then I know there's a, an organization, Seawill, Caribbean okay. yes. Women. Yes, and I had, I had the, the leader that Joe um, Robin Lyons on mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. The fact of the matter is, um, for all that the Bahamas has achieved internationally on the global landscape, we have not done enough politically. Okay. Um, uh, with regards to female leadership and interaction um, at, the, at, the, at the high levels. And I believe that it is a great feat when we increase those numbers. Okay. Um, women in the Bahamas have been phenomenal in business, sports, uh, the arts, um, religion, um, education, you name it. Uh -huh. um, and we've had some superstars in politics, but not enough. Okay. Um, and the women that we speak to in the political process have lamented some of the disadvantages that uh, are before them. Um, and so I'm not going to be coy about it um, and say that, um, that we don't know. We know in the Free National Movement we've had candid conversations uh, with our, our females uh, who are great leaders about um, politics for them. It is difficult. Yeah. And so where we can... Um, see to assist and to make room for persons who are fully adequate in their ability. We will, we will and we must. Um, and so I'm, I look forward to that 37% increasing and it being much more competitive for us. And, and that's what it does, um, Pearlie. Okay. When you have competition um, just amongst the men, okay. um, it, it forces us to do better. Okay. And so now when we have the females coming in and being equally um, as competitive um, and, and getting these positions and, and, and doing what they have to do, this forces all of us to rise to the challenge. Now, we know in the next general election, the two major parties, God willing, will have males running it. You think the Bahamas is ready for a female prime minister? I think the Bahamas is indeed ready for a female prime minister. Let me tell you why I believe the okay. Bahamas is ready. Bahamians are at the point now where they want the best, uh -huh. and they know that they deserve the best. Yeah. And if the female candidate for leader of any major political party is the best, I believe now, it may be tough, it may be difficult, but I think we're in a position now where we're just going to go with the best. 
Pearlie is the one person that believes females don't support females in this country. We we don't our females don't vote for each other in this country, and I I, I think we need because the, the, there are more females than males in this country. Females should be supporting their own. Mm -hmm. But the result from the FNM convention tells a different, different story. Different story, now. okay. Uh, we're beginning to turn from that. Okay. And, and the FNM is going to take the lead and has always taken the lead when it comes to female representation in politics and business. And so it's going to continue. Okay. Um, and so I've seen females on the convention floor campaign heavy for other females. Okay. Um, I've seen them hand out their flyers and make phone calls and do what they need to do. And so that, that may have been something in the past, but okay. I believe we're moving away from that. Okay, wonderful. Texter says, Pearlie, I think the speakers should be elected differently. They should not have a party to be with. If I'm correct, I think, and I, I think it may be in London, in, in England, where the, the speaker is there for a particular period of time, so they don't have to be worried about being re-elected, being anything, that they can keep that neutrality. How was your views on maybe the speaker? Because, you know, the governing party elect amongst themselves who the speaker should be. Should that be an independent, totally independent seat? I, I know that the former speaker um, and the late Don Saunders, former speaker Helson Moutry and the late Don Saunders would have advocated for certain independence of certain realms of independence for the speaker mm -hmm. um, um, in terms of the budget and other aspects. Um, I'm not too familiar with all of the details that would have been proposed, but I think we could go right back there and check and start there. I think the persons who have been speakers in the past, um, the Honorable Alvin Smith and mm -hmm. others, I think they would be good persons to speak to. When we talk about reform, we have to really understand what has happened in the past and where we are now and not be so emotional. Okay. Uh, this this current speaker um, it does provide lots of emotion for for us. Okay. Um, or we are emotional um, <laughs> as a result of some of the stuff that she does. This text ain't letting me rest. Also, we let and I'm reading again. Also, we let F and M roll out an initiative for men only, like the PLP did when they offered business loans for women only. Pearly, your guest didn't answer my question. Where is the initiative for men considering that men are graduating college? Aren't I think you want to say aren't graduating college and at risk of violence? I would like a concrete answer on what they would do specifically for young men. What I do believe is that we need to start at the school level. I believe, um, and this is my belief uh, about education in the Bahamas, I think that our young men need more targeted programs, um, not just vocational programs. I think the actual math and English and whatnot, I think we need to more focus on how do young men learn because we could do all the loans and everything that we want to do, but if they don't have, if we don't have um, the very basic education, then it, it really counts for nothing. Okay. And so I do believe that we need advances for those who are underprivileged economically and those who are high achievers academically. Mm -hmm. I do believe that there should be a, a particular emphasis on helping them. Um, because we know that crime is associated directly with poverty mm -hmm. and lack of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to um, assist these young men, we need to make sure and ensure that they have an education and that they have the financial support or opportunity to seek the financial support that is necessary. Okay. Great show as usual. Y'all being politically correct about this. Hell, hell no, we ain't ready for a female PM. The females don't even vote for themselves. Boy, I tell you. Ask your guess what will they do about crime and BPL if elected in our bad roads. Boy, our roads are bad. Great show as usual. Ask your guess if he could have the crime disruptor job. If he could have, if he could have, if I could have the crime disruptor, like, meaning the texter. The, meaning the texter. Well, he'd have to speak with uh, the two the two crime I think he, he's ain't under, <laughs> under, under an FNM government if he could have that job. <laughs> he'd have to speak with the two crime disruptors about and that, I, even I, under the FNM. I, I, I think it's kind of, and he's basically asking that the, that the, would the Free National Movement look at crime and BPL in a different way than the PLP? I think the Free National Movement will and must look at crime and BPL differently. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you listen to um, our leader and a deputy leader as they speak about crime in and outside of the House of Assembly, and they spoke about the proposals that they presented to the government on crime, um, they have thought about this and have canvassed not just FNMs, but persons who are affected by crime. That's all of us. And so I do believe 
And I, I, I cannot wait for it to happen to see a comprehensive plan on crime that connects all of us, uh, business, church, um, the, the health providers, everybody who's affected by crime. Because when you get somebody who's a gunshot victim or a victim of an assault, that's a strain and stress on the medical system. It is. And so I think that, that there's going to be a comprehensive crime initiative, crime plan. And it has to be connected to the economy as well. Like I said earlier, the best way to initially tackle um, certain um, in, in entries into crime um, by persons is to eliminate poverty. When people have something to do and they can make some money um, and they can see themselves and feel productive, then they're less likely or less inclined to commit some of the crimes that we see happening today. Brother Roy, this time has been too short. It's 5 o'clock. <laughs> 5 o'clock. We got to get the 5 o'clock news in. Can you stay a couple minutes right after? I certainly can. Okay. I love being here. We won't be, we, I know a lot of my callers want us to talk sports, but we're going to take a few minutes and have a, I'll take five minutes after the break and talk a little more about one or two other things. This is Pearly on Talking Heads Thursdays on Garden Ready 96.9 FM. We're going to take a break and then love my special guest, the Frank Rhodes, Secretary General of the Free National Movement, to join us right after the break. We'll be back. Tired of the hustle and bustle of city life? Yearning for a relaxing getaway without the headaches of international travel? Well, we've got just the thing for you. Escape to paradise without leaving home with our limited time, two fly free offer for Bahamas residents. Whether you're craving adventure, seeking to reconnect with your roots, or simply yearning to unwind in secluded shores, the Family Islands has something for everyone. But you better act fast because this incredible two fly free offer is only available until June 30th. Don't let this opportunity slip away. So why wait? Book your trip today. Escape the ordinary. Discover the extraordinary and experience the magic of the family islands. Visit BahamasResidence.com for more information and start planning your ultimate island getaway today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. in the market, you get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy, and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play we put in Bahamians first, guaranteed to play. Island Games. We like them mother jokers, we've been here from the start, from the bike to computer. Island Games, we can make your dreams come true. We play it with Island Games. Is it a burger? No. Is it pizza? Come on, man, it's KFC. Whatever the crunch this is, it's delicious. New, the Kentucky Cheetah Sandwich. Crispy chicken topped with marinara sauce, mozzarella, and pepperoni. Order your Cheetah Sandwich now at KFCNassau.com or at your favorite KFC restaurant today. It's new and it's radical. KFC, it's finger licking good. Ignite your leadership capabilities, expand your vision, and chart the path to a bright future at the CIBC Caribbean Ignite Leadership Conference, 27th of June at Bahamar, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Join Sarah Kunst, a venerated entrepreneur who has worked at Apple and Red Bull. Sarah is a Forbes 30 Under 30 Future Innovator and has been honored by the Wall Street Journal. Also hear about the leadership journey of Anthony Ferguson and Crystal Rutherford Ferguson. This event is designed for senior business executives and seasoned entrepreneurs register at cibcfcib.com forward slash ignite to secure your space only successful registrants will be acknowledged join us for the ignite leadership conference june 27th at bahamar Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by the Bahamas Out Island Promotion Board, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Fine Threads, First Caribbean Bank, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, Prince Masters, and Tropical Gyros. Welcome back, welcome back, Talking Heads. Thursday was with Pearly, is 96.9 FM on Guardian Radio. I've asked uh, Secretary General Safendro to hang around a couple more minutes because we're going to get one or two things in. But I want to just take a look at these texts. 
He said that targeting primary schools, but the FNM doesn't have an initiative to roll out. Dexter, let's get real now. This is 2024. I would think that the, the, the opposition is now do, uh, doing its manifesto, doing its, its, um, its due diligence. So for them to say that they have a whole uh, crime or education program to roll out now is really pushing your luck and really trying to, like, you know, be... I don't think they'll have it ready. I think they'll have certain aspects of it they can talk about, one or two things that they're looking at. But I think the the the, um, the manifesto committee should just be getting together and starting to look at things that that they would want to introduce to the country, basically. And 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 even looking at this budget that the government has put out, it will help them decide which direction they want to go in. So I think it's an unfair tax. Well, so per, well, Pearly, uh, it may be an unfair tax. Okay, but that person, if that means so much to them, I'm happy that they've taken the time to send that tax. Fair enough. Um, let we want to hear from them. Okay. We have our headquarters on Mackey Street. We have our social media pages. Send us a note. Let us know what you want to see. Okay. Um, and then after you see our manifesto, if you don't see what you believe needs to be there, then criticize us on that. Good point. Two things I want to talk about. Um, I've been seeing recently a lot of people complaining about the lack of banking on family islands. Um, can't get banking done. Some islands have ATM machines that don't ever work. You can't get money in. You can't put money out. Give me, where are we you, going with that? Listen, you know, we had so many delegates um, from our family islands and Grand Bahama um, come to New Providence for this convention. And one of the things that I have found traveling throughout the family islands doing party work is um, there's some islands that have inadequate banking facilities. Some have none. Um, this is not good. This is not good for small business owners. This is not good for persons who want to save, who want to be, um, who want to uh, start a savings program with a bank so that they can have a credit profile of, of sorts. Mm. And so we don't want to disadvantage anyone in the family islands. We are an archipelago. We have to address this issue head on. Our leader has spoken to this. I've seen some responses, lackluster responses from the government uh, to what he has spoken to. Um, but the truth of the matter is we need to encourage uh, proper banking facilities. We need to encourage more Bahamians in the banking arena, um, ownership of banking facilities and other financial uh, structures. And so I believe that we have to, if we care about our people, we have to address these issues head on. Banking, healthcare, policing, these are things that, these are really old issues that have not been sufficiently addressed. Okay. I have the Sandal app on my phone. I've used it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Bahamians don't really know about it. Are they doing a good job of teaching Bahamians on the Sandal? Because I think that will be another area of, of being a form of banking that we can do outside of the physical, pick a, pick a $100 bill and pay for a bill. I think not enough is being done. But I don't want to criticize the persons who are tasked with that. Okay. Um, I believe those are professional persons who are doing their best with the resources that they've been given, the marketing resources and whatnot. They need more. Okay. And lastly, before I let you go, <coughs> I saw a, a video on Facebook yes, is it yesterday or the day before. And I'm hearing a lot more story that, and, 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 and I'm not here to criticize the police. I, I want to say that before I say anything, because they are our friends and, and we do need them. <coughs> But there was this police officer, he had to be at least 6'8", 300 pounds, pick up this little, this little uh, tomboyish lady who had to be maybe 5'4", 100 and some pounds, and lick her down and cuff her. Is there an, in, a rise on, and I don't want to use the word brutality, but police aggression? You have an interesting way of describing people, I would say that much. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm sure that, uh, we, we all understand what you mean. I... I think that's a. We have to be very careful um, when we talk about police brutality. Yes, and that's why I say I don't want to accuse them of anything. Because our police deserve our support yes, for the job do. that they're doing. Where there are questionable practices, we need to utilize the proper mechanisms and means to get to make complaints. Um, we need to. Uh, this the complaints and corruptions unit of the police uh, department. Um, we have a very accessible commissioner of police. Um, we need to get that information to them, and we need to um, really try and enforce um, the complaints uh, unit, um, get, getting those complaints through, yes, um, and and ensuring that they are heard and that they're processed. Okay. 
but we need to support our police officers. Yeah, I think our police are working hard They're up against, you know, t- tremendous amount of people doing craziness. Mm-hmm. I, I use, for lack of a, on radio, I can't use the word I really want to use. Yeah. So we have to support our police, but I think the one or two that aren't no. doing it, we need to yes. make sure that they don't make it yes. bad for the good ones. Yes. And that's probably 99.9% of the police force. And, and I will say because of social media and because of these devices, we're seeing a lot more of it. I don't know if it's an increase of it, it happening or just a, a greater awareness of, of okay. what has been going on. Um, to those persons who feel as though they have been brutalized by the police, again, there's ways and means to, to deal with that. But we have to support. My late father was a police officer. Mm-hmm. And um, he was not the best police officer, <laughs> but he did his best as a police officer. Okay. And I believe the men and women of the police force and the armed forces are doing their best. They should be encouraged. I think they need more Thank training, yes. retraining. Um, it is a stressful and difficult job without the resources that they do need. But police brutality is a no-no. You did say with, with the resources, then you think the police have been having adequate resources? Certainly not. Are there enough cars, enough CCTVs, drones? Are there enough? Listen, this is why I talk about um, a, a comprehensive plan. There's no use in getting all these vehicles if the roads break up. Yeah. Okay? And the police have to wear into those those vehicles are being used day in and day out, twenty four hours yeah. in some instances. Yeah. And so we have to ensure that when we get these resources, that we complement them um, with adequate with the adequate responses. The road needs the roads need to be good. Um, they need to be serviced on time. I don't know what happens in that in that aspect. And my, one of my pet peeves is, I, I said to myself driving yesterday, is there a road in the in Nassau in on New Providence without a pothole? I think the roads, and, and, and I use it affectionately, the roads that Papa built are pretty much holding on. But if you drive on Joe Farrington Road, on, on, uh, on East Street, on many roads, there's potholes everywhere, yeah. Soldier Road, yeah. everywhere, Nassau Street, everywhere. Potholes everywhere. Yeah, um, and, and I thought just, they had a pothole patrol. Yeah. Not, just, not just potholes everywhere. Let me tell you what else. You have the potholes. The roads look poor, look bad, deteriorated. Yeah. But you also have, in some instances, garbage collection not happening. Oh, let's talk. You really want to talk about I live in Chippenham. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Two weeks before they pick up the garbage. And and Marathon. I'm hearing. Marathon as well. They take two weeks. And you're supposed to pick them up twice a week. Mm -hmm. And I I remember I had a friend who had a contract under the previous administration. And if he missed one day, they threatened to take his Mm -hmm. contract. I got a note today in Winton as well. What are they doing about that? Please, you know, collect the garbage. Mm -hmm. I, I am marked as I'm marked as the man who's complaining with them all the time because yeah. I literally call. I got the worst thing they do is the, the fellow in charge of them give me his number, mm-hmm. and I text him or call him on a regular basis. I let him slide because I was so busy in the last few weeks. But come on, if we, it, two things that happens if with the garbage are there, you increase rodents. Mm-hmm. I mean, you increase rodents. That's another issue that we can have in our country. Mm-hmm. So we really collect what, the garbage, what are, man. What are we telling our young people? What are we telling our young people when the environment that they have? The infrastructure is crumbling. The streets are are full of potholes. The garbage is overflowing. What are we telling our young people? How can they be creative? How can they be inspired in such a nasty, despicable place that people are being paid to do something about? That's so dirty, bad, and looking bad. It's horrid. We got to fix it. It's horrid. We got to fix it. And and more people need to speak up about it. It is horrid. I agree with you. And we're too quiet on it. You know, you hit you, you hit a pothole, your car messed up, you got to find a new tire, a new rim. I had a friend the other day, she hit a pothole, that's new tire, a new rim she had to buy, and she ain't making a million dollars a week, she's struggling to make it in life. And now she's faced with these new road traffic, uh, re, the new regime for road traffic that is being proposed. And I'm, and people are starting to talk more about that, and you know what, we don't have enough time today, I need you back next week. Yep. Let's let's talk some more about some of these other things that that that, that concern people that we can bring up and have a conversation about. It would be my pleasure. Okay. This is Talking Heads uh, with Pearly, 96.9 FM and Gardening Radio. I'm going to say bye to my special guest, the Secretary General of the Free National Movement. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we can talk sports. I had the Lakers might have their new head coach. We'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and my daughter just lost last night. And yes, Jeff, your Yankees won. <laughs> so we'll have a talk in a minute. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Look forward to having you here again. Yes, thank you. All right. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast. 
providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Is it a burger? No. Is it pizza? Come on, man. It's KFC. Whatever the crunch this is, it's delicious. New, the Kentucky Cheetah Sandwich. Crispy chicken topped with marinara sauce, mozzarella, and pepperoni. Order your Cheetah Sandwich now at KFCNassau.com or at your favorite KFC restaurant today. It's new and it's radical. KFC, it's finger licking good. Maybe it's time to explore your options. There's no harm in reviewing your mortgage arrangement and considering a better deal. CIBC Caribbean can help you narrow your search and decide. Switch your mortgage to CIBC Caribbean and enjoy a special interest rate and help towards your switching cost. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash inspired home for more information. Conditions apply. John's Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion and at your feet. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And we're back, Talking Heads Thursday and Guiding Radio 96 by 9 FM. You know, sorry to go over sports people. Um, I just want to read these couple of texts. Hey, ask Mr. Rowley if he's thinking about running for parliament and what area. He says he's thinking and he will let us know next week when he come, if he comes back on the show. Uh, Thompson, you do not want to read my text about greedy FNM menace. Little boy, I, I trying to demand this finish here talking. I ain't that I don't read your text, you know. The man that's finished talking about unity. Why I can throw something to the finish true division out there? Why would I do that? Okay. Early, I like the choice of Dan. Okay, you get a little early. You jump in the gun on me there. We can get to that. Welcome to Sports Talk on Garden Radio 96.9 FM. Let's get right, right into it. Today in sports history. Today is Thursday, June 6, 2024. And today in sports history, in 1890, the United States Polo Association was founded in New York. 1934, Merrill Hodge, New York Yankees, hit six singles in a game against the Boston Red Sox. In 1939, the New York Giants hit five home runs in the fourth inning in a 17-3 victory over the Cincinnati Reds. In 1939, in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the first Little League game was played. Lundy Lumber defended, defeated Ly Cummings there 23-8. In 1946, the Basketball Association of America was formed in New York City, New York. In 1965, Tom Thresh, New York Yankees, hit home runs in three consecutive at-bats against the Chicago White Sox. In 1989, Wayne Gretzky, the GOAT of the Los Angeles Kings, won the Hart Trophy for the ninth time. He was the first player in NHL history to win the same award nine times. In 1992, Eddie, Mur- Eddie Murray Passed Mickey Mattel at the all-time switch hitter RBI list. Mattel had, had 1,509. In 1996, 
John Valentin became the 14th player in Boston Red Sox history to hit in all at-bats during a game. He hit for the cycle when he went 4-4 four for four against the Chicago White Sox. In 1996, Peter Frostburg of the Colorado Avalanche scored a first-period hat-trick against the Florida Panthers in Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals. He became only the third player in NHL history to score a first-period hat-trick in the Cup Final. He was also the sixth player to score a hat-trick in Cup Final games. In 1996, John Sackick of the Colorado Avalanche tied a Stanley Cup final record when he assisted on four goals against the Florida Panthers. Also in 1996, Basketball Executive Council told Marge Schott, owner of this Baseball Executive Council, told Marge Schott, owner of the Cincinnati Reds, to give up day-to-day -day operations within a week or face suspension of more than a year. Short has caused controversy with comments she made concerning Adolf Hitler in the ESPN interview. In 2003, the Seattle Mariners were defeated by the New York Yankees to end their 13-game road-winning streak. And finally, in 2018, the Washington Capitals won their first Stanley Cup when they defeated the Vegas Golden Knights in Game 5. Sports quote of the day, My wife said, That shouldn't disappoint you. You weren't my first choice either. Don Billis, while accepting the basketball coaching job at the New Mexico after Bobby Knight had been offered the job. Interesting. Let's take this caller. Call you on the air. What's up? Are you there, caller? I guess I make that call away too long. Call you on the air. How you doing? Yeah, great show. How you doing? I ready, brother. What's up? You want some big money spending tonight? <laughs> what are your betting spreads uh, for the game tonight? Stay tuned. I'm going to give that in a few minutes. I just want to talk about one or two other things, and I'll give you how I feel about the game. All right. gotcha. Fair enough? Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. So the big news coming out of L.A. right now is that the Lakers are targeting, going after, having discussions confirmed by both sides with Danny Hurley. Danny Hurley is the brother of Bobby Hurley, and also Danny Hurley is the coach of the back-to-back -back University of Connecticut NCAA Men's Basketball Championships. So I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. He is the type coach the Lakers need today. And one of the things I found out today is, you know, people say, oh, how does that affect LeBron? How does that affect LeBron? I was told that LeBron, and I had to talk to some LA officials, said LeBron told them, do not worry about picking a coach based on him. He may not be here this year. He may not be here at all this year. He may not be here for another year. He may only be one or two years. Find a coach that will be a long-term coach, a legacy coach that can probably develop the Laker younger players and anyone that are coming in. People like Max Christie, people like uh, Austin Reeves, uh, ha Rio Hachimori. I always pronounce that brother's name wrong. And, and Danny Hurley fits that bill. But what also he brings, in, and a lot of people talk about, will he be able to transition from college to NBA? Now, understand what's going on with college now. College changing a whole lot. And he's at a school that don't have that big football money like Alabama, like, like Florida State, like, like, like uh, Michigan, and like Ohio State, and, and schools, and USC, schools like that. And if, you, if you've been paying attention, uh, the NCAA settled a, a, a billion dollar, uh, a, a two point some billion dollar um, lawsuit that will now allow players to be paid, but it's only for five of the major conferences, that players will be paid a salary to play. So the whole landscape of NCAA sports is changing. And it's harder to just, you know, back in the day, people would just want to come to play for Duke because they wanted that D-U-C-K on their chest. And they wanted to come to Duke and they wanted the, the, the nostalgia of Duke and the, and the, and the mystery and the, the mystic of Duke. That ain't happening no more. Because brothers want to make money. They want to be paid. And this the NIL uh, name, uh, name likeness and uh, name, image, and likeness Contracts that a lot of players like my girl Angel Reese makes or made over three some over three million dollars just for coach and for for Chanel Chanel actually for Chanel bags and Chanel perfumes and other companies like that. So players are now being paid. So the whole recruiting thing is difficult because you can't stop. You can't bring a player in your freshman year and then he don't leave. But what Danny Hurley brings is a sort of a pro style offense. That will transition very easily into the NBA, what he's doing. Because a lot of it is what he's doing is what NBA players do. I think it's perfect. I think it's fantastic. 
I'm putting my vote behind Danny Hurley. I know Naughty didn't want J.J. Reddick there, so I'm speaking to him today, Naughty was flipping backflips. You know he got a bad back. He was excited that Danny Hurley could possibly be the Lakers, and I expect that announcement to be made anytime soon. And the first text says, I like the choice of Danny Hurley for the Lakers, way better than J.J. Reddick. Danny Hurley played basketball at my alma mater, Seton Hall University in New Jersey. The largest diocesan Catholic university in the U.S. You got to put that in there. Hurley is a diehard Catholic. Good point. He used to come to mass on the weekends on campus. I used to give him communion. Hurley, you are a Catholic and a graduate of a Catholic school. I'm a graduate of St. Augustine's College in Nassau and St. John's University in Collegeville, Minnesota. Just like Danny Hurley. So you need to support the Lakers in hiring him, LOL. I support that. I am excited about that. I think it's a good move for the Lakers if it happens. I, I can't ask for anything better than that right now for my Lakers. Um, it's, it's almost, I can't say it's perfect, but it's getting rave reviews everywhere. People are talking about it. ESPN, I mean, Stephen A. Smith is like, yeah, let's make this move. I like the move not only for the Lakers, but I like it for Danny Hurley. He comes from a legacy family. His father is the one of only two, and that's Bobby Hurley Sr., one of only two high school, get it, two high school basketball coaches in the, in the, in the, in the, in the basketball hall of fame. Only two, and Bobby Hurley died. And then Bobby Hurley, we all know that Bobby Hurley was a great player um, and got an accident, got it, but wasn't the same after that. And Danny Hurley has been a fantastic coach. Wherever he has coached, he has won. So hopefully he will bring, he will bring the, um, the coaching, he will bring that, that winning mentality, that player development ability to the Lakers. I can't ask, I can't ask for a better coach right now. And, and I was, and you know, Naughty and I spoke about this, and I was talking, I don't want them, every time you're recycling coaches, and I, that's why I wasn't too hard on bringing J.J. Redick in, a, a rookie coach, a, a first-time coach, because um, I was tired of seeing the, the Mike Browns and, and, and the Vogels and others coming, just retreading these, you know, you come to the Lakers, you get fired, you go to Sacramento, you get fired, you go to Denver, you get fired, you come right back to the Lakers. No, I wanted to see something different. I wanted to see something fresh. And if the Lakers sign Donnie Hurley as their head coach, I will be jumping joy. I will be making the most joy. And I'll become what Naughty calls that guy. I will become that guy. And, and, and Hurley has confirmed um, that he's spoken to the LA, uh, but his business as usual for now. And that's the normal talk. Is they may come up to an agreement on money because it's going to be a hefty check. It's going to be a huge salary. Um, the Lakers offered Mike Sosieski, who had Duke coach 20 years ago, $8 million a year, and he turned that down. Um, it can be more than that this time for, for Danny Hurley, and I think he will take the job. It's, it's a, he, he's won, he wants to coach in the NBA, and this will be a perfect place for him to come in L.A. Now, the only holdback is that he's an East Coast man. His wife is from the East Coast. His, his in-laws are from the East Coast. They're from the East Coast. But ain't no more churning in the house. His, his, his son just graduated. His, his last child has graduated, so the nest is empty. It's perfect. It's almost like scripted that is so perfect to get him in there. And on that note, let's take this next call. I'll call you on the air. How about you saying? Hey, players, what's going on, man? Man, I excited. I excited. Yeah, you should be. You should be excited. You know? I agree with you two over J.J. Reddick. But let me touch on something, please. Okay. Ah, uh, Pearly, because I want to say you talking with this. Why are you talking with this couple of times and I'm supposed to engage you on this? Ah. Uh -huh. Well, Pearly, you need to get the name of that company, that garbage collecting company, and expose them on the radio, man. You a tax paying. Are you paying the day day? No, the problem is, see, see, you paying your, the ministry, uh, Pearly, the Department of Environment, have contracts with a bunch. See, they, they, I see the, the, the Department of Environment got to manage them better. Yeah, well, because say, they have a bunch of contracts out there. Yeah, yeah, but let me tell you why I say that, Purdy. So, collect whoever the company is, what is collect for Bamboo Town. Uh-huh. Purdy, I we don't have that problem with you up. It's a white truck with a yellow back, man. I know the company is the name. It's a Ford truck, garbage truck with a yellow, yellow piece in the back. Purdy, my garbage is going to collect twice a week. Not in Japan. Twice a week. Monday and Wednesday or Wednesday and a Friday. We, twice a week. See, I, I tell people... I lived in Seabreeze before I moved back in Chippenham. You know, they, they put me out. Uh -huh. That's a different story for a different day. I yeah. didn't mind if they took two weeks because I had a nice a nice garbage receptacle with a gate and everything. So I could pile it all up in there. And you don't have no dogs running around in Chippenham, in, in, right. in Seabreeze. But in Chippenham, the dogs all over the place. And they, they decide, oh, you leave your garbage there and I'm hungry. They come and have a four-course meal in my yard. Right. And then so I had there raking, I there raking up garbage, and that's annoying. I hate that. I hate that too, baby. Waking it up in the morning, putting it back in there. That's why I'm glad 
we have a good company in it. But let, let me show you something. Uh-huh. You know how they say they stop taking the iron drums? Yeah, I have a plastic drum. I got a pl- plastic now, right? I got a plastic drum, so they know yeah, issue. Yeah, so what happened? I had a plastic and an iron. Uh-huh. And the iron bottom rot note. So Ooh. I let them care, right? And I said, I can't go buy me on plastic. They on 55 get on plastic. But I don't even have to go get that because the one don't have a full. Uh, okay. The truck stay around you. Wait, I can't is- even full that. Every time I go there, I say, hey, this is still full run. When I look, the buy drop straight to the bob and the garbage truck then be in you. So that's why you got exposed that company. Man, I, I, talk, I, I, call, I, don't, I don't know the company name, but I know yeah, one thing. the name of the company come out for Bamboo Down, I go, there's a white truck with a little yellow box. The fella used to be on the back waking, now he's driving. But see, I want to stop and talking to them and encourage them and tell them they're doing a good job. If they come by me, I give them a water or yeah. a white amount or a soda or something, or something like that and things like that. Because they're doing an excellent twice a week. Uh, I, now, yeah. let's get back on sport. Okay. I guess I'm going to put that in there. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you know, who I pull it for tonight? The world who I pull it for I know you gave a Dallas tonight. Oh, you know, you know, I hate Boston. Yeah, yeah, Boston. yeah. You gave a Dallas oh, tonight. And, and Dallas, Boston is play bad home. They play bad home. So, like, Bartley say all the time, punch them in the mouth quick. Like, Look, how Boston. you come out, Luca, in that last game uh-huh. against uh, Minnesota? Uh-huh. Come out yesterday, that trend. Firing. Get firing. Turning up every carry. Go straight to the basket. Don't wait till no second half to go to a team. Just switch on. But, but so I think... I think that's um, all got Boston. Because Boston has played by at home. And they've been off long. They've been off longer than y'all. But Pozinga, so Pozinga is supposed to be back today. So I don't know. Pozinga? P- 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 yeah. Yeah, he should be back. Yeah, he said them see his three-pointers and everything. And that. He didn't saw it. But uh, uh, D.C., Washington, and... The other center with the brown eyes, uh, him with the headband. Are you trying to remember his name right now? Yeah, but hey, they need to step up. They need to step up and carry on like how they really carry on. But uh, I'm looking for Dallas to take this in six. I want Dallas to take this in six. Okay, okay. Right, time but I, I'll give, I'm going to give, I'm going to give my predictions. Hey, but yeah. I want, I want to ask you one yeah. thing. I see okay. a story in Bleacher Report now that there's a pathway for the 76ers to get Bronny and LeBron James in Philadelphia. What's your feelings on that? Well, that's his dream. That's his ultimate dream. Ah. That looked like a win for him. Because he always wanted to be a father and son in the NBA. The first father and son playing against one another in the NBA. Now, the Sixers fans and Buddy Hill them and NBA them, mm. I know how they like that. And uh, being coached by uh, uh, Doc Rivers back then. Uh, no, Doc Rivers, no, no, he ain't there. He gone. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 he with the box. Because you know yeah, they, they're talking, they're the talking like the players and the fans get like that. But then you know, but they're but talking like one more year, there, man. The man ain't on forty. This yeah. Christmas can make him forty, man. He he do one year with Bronny. That's his ultimate dream. It's bucket list. He can take that off, and, and it's a win for him. I think so. Well, let's talk. Let's talk that. Look at any old Bronny putting up ten point, twelve points a game, and things like that. He ain't playing no solid defense and things like that. Like he died. Everyone's scared, but he hot. And they think he could fall out again and things like that. But the doctor didn't claim him up. And they didn't say he good to go. Okay. So he has to keep your fingers crossed, keep praying, and keep the faith that he good and he good to go. And try to uh, put at least one big toe in the shoe of your old man. You can't uh, put the, the old shoes. You can't. Uh, you have some big shoes to fill. But put a big toe in and try at least fill one big toe of your old man legacy. Okay, well, they're they saying here now that the Sixers were interested in Paul George, but there's belief that the Clippers and George can come to this agreement. And then they also was targeting your man, Jimmy Butler. Uh, oh. But they say they don't think they don't think that that um, the Heat can part ways with Butler like that. I don't think so. But, but they're saying Jimmy letting Butler go. Even Pat was mad with him because he talking. But if he was there, he'd win. They'd win. Uh-huh. Pat say, "Well, be there, then. Be there. Let's stop talking <laughs> foolishness." Yeah. And, and then they say um, the Sixers got number sixteen and forty-one picks, so they're thinking that. Uh, if they will take Bronny in number 41, which will entice uh, LeBron to want to come there, and he'll probably take a, 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 a lower salary to come there. Yeah, man, that's only a hype up, hype up Philly, though. hype up the league, make more money, more jersey sell out of Philly, all the games selling out from now, seasonal tickets sell out because LeBron and Bronny playing together. Yeah, it's a big money minute making scheme. It'd be probably a good plus for Philadelphia. I mean, really, if, money into the gun. But if you go to Philly, you're only losing $5 million, man. Really, I mean, it's, you know, the Lakers could give him a three-year max deal at 162 Man, the man, wait, $1.7 billion. Yeah, but but five million in that name, the that's the point. Money. So, you mean, the Lakers could offer him $162 million, where the, the Sixers could offer him $157 million. So, they ain't really no big deal in money. Yeah, you know, big deal in that, man. I mean, what? 
Yeah, man. So that's his dream. will finally come true, boy. He play with Braun. He play with his son. Richard will be another history. He make in the league and everything. A father and son playing against one another on the same team. Boy, that'll be big for the league. Yeah, so it's only, I yeah. mean, there's only other, any other team, other than the Lakers and the Sixers, only other team got offered many big money would be the Pistons. I know you want to go to the Pistons and then all the Atlantic Magic. Which, well, why why are you going to that Cleveland game and sit up in the front row like that, like the shock the world? Like that, so the world, exactly, like exactly, the shock the world yeah, like again. Back to Cleveland. He ain't going back there. I don't see that. Now, anymore. he born in Cleveland. He going to school in Cleveland and things like that. A lot of all his investments. All the charities in Cleveland and things like that. He liked to retire in the other jersey, hang up in Cleveland. He loved that. But, you know, it's still all about the money. Who playing the big bucks? Yeah, but like... Once if him and Bronny could play together, he'll give up some money to play with Bronny. Yeah, well, go, go, yeah. please. Go, go, to, go to Philly. Go to Philly. Let y'all have the headache in the East Coast. Yeah, well, then you and Naughty y'all will stop crying and whining, and then it'll be good <laughs> if he leave. Because especially Naughty. Naughty <laughs> ate the man with the passion, so, you know, I'll... I'll Naughty would be any glory. I oh. think I think he would. I think he would be in his glory. Yeah, well, he would be any glory. <laughs> anyway, but like you say, the rebuilding, you tell Naughty all the time, but get ready to prepare the uh, six years of rebuilding. They even probably get back to the finals or they even get in the playoff and everything. Like this. If you break up and rebuild, you got to come from scratch. But now, nah, let's be real now. Nah. If, 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 Hurley, if Danny Hurley comes there, mm-hmm. I think it, it'll be less than six years. Okay, and then who come in with Davis? Who could be with Davis? Who you say want to bottle them? Or who you say no? It's the, it's, LeBron? It, it, the, the Lakers, so they they'll have money. Then they can bring almost anybody, any you know, and and develop them. You know, just develop some young, a young talented player that can develop. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And undrafted players like our part rallies do all the time. Do bring in a couple of them. You see how they scale. Okay, mm. but let yeah. me get to the picks because we yeah. got a, a yeah, yeah, uh, we yeah, got yeah. a final okay, fifteen. First, with, we can link up over this long holiday, holiday. I can link you here. Yeah. I get, I need to come hit my bottle. Yes, yeah, all right, all right, brother. Okay. I could be looking forward for that. All right, yeah. brother. All right, brother. Take your time. You too, man. So, you we know, we... Respect you. Manners and respect. Yes, my brother. Take time. So we, we can get to the picks right now because we got Colin Coward with who's going to talk about the Lakers talking to Danny Hurley. I think is an interesting topic, so that's going to be a little longer than normal. Um, so let's look at the picks right now. The caller wanted to know who I'm going to go with tonight. Boy, all right. I, and, you know, I actually had something in my head before... I spoke to Muff this now. The Celtics are a six and a half point favorite tonight over the Mavericks. But based on what Muff said, and I really, I'm picking the Mavericks to win it all. I'm picking the Mavericks to win the NBA title this year, all right? And I'm picking them to win it in five, maybe six. So tonight, I think that the Mavericks are going to come into Boston and shock them and punch them in the mouth. I'll take the Mavericks in the money line tonight, and I'm taking the Mavericks to win it all tonight. Two other games, two games in the WNBA. My girlfriend's um, Angel Reese in the Sky at the Washington Mystics. I pick in the Sky on the money line. And the Liberty and the Land of Dream Bay in the night. Uh, let's go with the Liberty tonight. I think the Liberty, John Cabell, them playing some good basketball. Um, she looked pretty good the other night um, against um, the LA Sparks. So I think I'll take so the Sky over the Mystics, the Liberty over the Dream, and the Dallas Mavericks on the money line over the Boston Celtics tonight. And my daughters who took two on the chin from the Pirates will bounce back tonight and take one for the Pirates and go into New York Yankee Stadium and take two out of three in New York over the weekend. It's been a great, great day. It's been a great talking as Thursday with Pearlie on Garden Ready 96.9. We're going to take the break, and when we come back, Colin Cowher is going to talk a little bit about the Danny Hurd and possible signing in L.A. It's going to happen, friends. Take it from here. You heard it first from Pearlie. Take care. Have a great weekend. Be safe. There's no show tomorrow. Tomorrow's Labor Day. Support the workers of the Bahamas. And we'll see you Monday on Talking Heads. Take care. Try to rest, but roll with the best. For all your printing needs, there ain't no one better, no. For posters and binders, magazines and flyers. For window decals, reading cards and newsletters. No job too big and there's no job too small. You name it, we can print it. Just give us a call. Let print.
masters, bring your masterpiece to life. Located in the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 3022361. Living with a neurological condition shouldn't define you. At Cleveland Clinic in Florida, we do whatever it takes to make life better today while discovering new treatments for a brighter tomorrow. From epilepsy management to specialized spine care and brain tumor surgery, we're delivering world-class neurology care for the day-to-day, for the days you live for, for every care in the world. Visit clevelandclinicflorida.org slash Caribbean. Flavid Island Games, we making dreams come true. Flavid Island Games, we paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market, you get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy, and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island we put in Bahamian spice, guaranteed to pay. Island Games, we like them mother jokers, we've been here from the start, from the bike to computer. Island Games, we can make your dreams come true. We playing with Island Games. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. If you want those slacks hemmed or just taking the waist, then fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video. Want to step out and look great? Then fine threads is your place. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. Is your place. Is your place. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Paul Pierce came out of Kansas. He went to the Celtics, and his first coach, let's bring Paul out, was Rick Patino, who was obviously the legendary coach, the ascending coach, the genius coach at Kentucky. So Paul Pierce, 19 years in the NBA. So let's get right to that. So Patino had to deal with... Um, Big market, relentless Boston media. Yeah. There's some legendary quotes, as you know, Larry Bird's not walking through that door and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so let's go back to your rookie year where these college coaches, they get to choose all the players, big man mm-hmm. on campus, and now here comes the big market media. Right. Did you know immediately this could be a little turbulent? Well, I didn't know immediately because when you come out of college and playing for a college-based coach, I thought the pros was no different from college. Until I heard from, like, other players, veterans that were on the team, you know, you had Kenny Anderson, Dana Barrows, uh, you know, guys who played for other NBA coaches. They'd be like, you know, this is not the NBA. This is this is crazy, you know, what we're like doing. Practice. Like, the way we practiced. And it was times where we lost a game. We would land one in the morning, and we'd be at the be in the gym in an hour. We, we did that. And yeah, two in the morning? Two in the morning. We had practice before. I remember that, like yesterday. And, you know, I don't know no better, but other guys would be like, no, this ain't what NBA really all about. <laughs> you know, we practicing on back-to-backs. And, but I don't know no different. I don't know no different until, like, really until, like, Doc come around, you know? And then I was like, oh, this is this is NBA? I mean. So, so, so when Doc came around, Doc would, I always heard the stories about Doc. When he mm-hmm. had the veteran team, yeah. Doc would tell veterans on a road trip, "We won't practice until you lose." Like if you were winning, oh, we would do that. Yes, that's right. Yes, I remember. I mean, we've come to shoot around, and we on a team that's in the middle of a four-game losing streak. I remember saying one day, like Doc, we don't even need practice for this. We got this. He said, "You sure? We got this, Doc. We go out, win by 20." And so we gathered that trust. So every time we did that, as long as we won, you know, we, we didn't have to go to shoot around. It was actually shoot around, not practice. Right. I mean, shoot around would take place the day of the game. So that morning you'll go through a walkthrough. Yeah. And so I'll be, we get to walk through like that. We don't need to walk through for them. We're just going to go get some rest, get ready for tonight. That's right. Veterans. Yeah, Mostly veterans. Bit. That was pre-Netflix. Now you just get to sleep. Right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, so Dan Hurley's interesting because... I mean, the people I didn't, but for the record, Patino may have worn you guys out, but he was a brilliant basketball mind. Yeah. Hurley is considered similarly uh, a really br- a brilliant guy. I also think Hurley, back in Patino's day, you didn't have the media coverage. Everybody was kind of kind of trying to figure out college of the pro thing. I don't think Hurley would be calling 2 a.m. practices. No, no, but, but he- we had a young team, too, though, at the time. Our team was based around our youngsters. Me, Ron Mercer, Antoine Walker yeah. were the building blocks. 
So it's a little different in this situation. You got the star of all stars over there. So, and ADs, you know, no. And, and, and AD, I mean, yeah. So you got, got – and they won. So, you know, it just – Makes me wonder what's the real expectations are around here when you bring him in. So you're flying to Boston for game two. Yep. I hope they have nice seats for you. Hopefully. Okay, hopefully. hopefully. So um, I, I've said this before. Fans in the media don't matter a lot, but players, you can't hide from everything. Mm -mm. It feels like the pressure's all on Boston. So when you played the Lakers, the mm -hmm. good news about playing the Lakers was they had to face pressure, too. They got, they got yeah. Kobe. They got Gasol. Yeah. But if I got the better offensive roster, I have dominated the East for seven years. Luke is on a heater. I yeah. think there's real pressure on Boston. Absolutely, there's more pressure. Coming into the season, Colin, nobody expected the Mavs to be in the finals. I didn't think they'd be the Clippers. Yeah. So, of course, the odds-on favorite was Boston. If they weren't the odds-on favor, they were near the top based on what they did over the last few years. And then you make the trade for Drew Holiday, for Zingis. You already got Tatum, who's been an MVP candidate, Brown, perennial all-star. Of course the pressure's on, but that's the pressure we want. We, we only hang up championship ban banners in Boston. We don't care about division championships or Eastern Conference championships, it's always pressure. And there's only certain organizations in all the sports, you got to understand, right. that has these type of pressures. Boston, Lakers, Dallas Cowboys, Yankees. New York Yankees. Yeah. That's fine. We know what it is when we walk in there every day. See that? Look at that decoration. Look at all these decorations. Right, right, right. That's what it's about. So how you were a two-way player. Um, you were a better version of Paul George. You were a two-way player that could do it on both ends, long, could handle the ball, mm -hmm. could score. How would you defend Luka? Well, I think the, th the thing is, the best way to, to defend him is to make him play defense. Because those other series I saw, he didn't have to defend. You never saw him in foul trouble too much. You didn't see him. All you saw him was over there in the corner guarding some guy who was a catch-and-shoot guy or Rudy Gobert posting him up who wasn't – a, a big post threat anyway in the last series. And then you got to find ways to go at him to make him have the pressure of guarding. So if he's over here guarding Derek White, let's see if I can get him in a situation to where he's on the island with Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown or even in the post of Porzingis. Let's put some pressure on him that way. Because if you wear him down on that end, it'll affect his offense, trust me. Because I've been in series where – it was tough for me to score. I got I to gotta worry so much about guarding LeBron or Carmelo or, or Vince Carter that it just wears you out to where you just sometimes don't have the energy on the offensive end. And I think best method to go about it because he's the leading scorer. It's going to be tough to just stop him saying we're going to focus this defensive strategy. You got to go at him on the other end. Go to all the great players you played. Um, does Luka have a hole? Did all great players, even Kobe, have a side or a hole? Does Luka have one? I think with all great players, you just got to pray it's not their night. And you got to find ways just to not make it as easy as it always usually is for them. Yeah. Like if Luka has 35 or and you say he shot 10 for 28, I'm happy. I'm happy. You know, he... He, he was he, inefficient. He was inefficient. Maybe he got to the line and... and made some tough shots, but if he's inefficient, I'm happy with that night because if he's getting 35 and he's efficient, then that, that's not a good sign. You're not doing anything to disrupt what he's doing out there. So you play, didn't you play a couple of years with J.J. Redick? Yes, I did. Um, what, 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 do you, what, what would he be like? I mean, obviously he went to Duke. A little snobby, you know Duke guys. Little, no, I mean, probably you know a little Duke snobby. Guys. Got good hair, Duke guy. Yeah. Yep. A little snobby. Did he connect with guys at all? Yeah, I thought J.J. was pretty cool. I, I connected with him. We had our basketball conversations in the locker room. I thought he, I think he has a great, intelligent basketball mind, high IQ. So, yeah, I mean, I could see him actually developing into a good coach, not actually being out the gate, because I think there's always a learning curve. But then you thought the same thing with Jason Kidd. Kind of. Jason Kidd out the gate. Steve Kerr out the gate. I mean... I thought Jock Vaughn would be a great coach. I mean, he's I played Jock Vaughn in college. Brilliant basketball mind. And most point guards are. 
So, you know, it, sometimes it translates and sometimes you, you gain the respect of the players, but then sometimes it's just not for you. So isn't the key, though, that the best players like the coach and everybody falls in line? Is it like if Dan Hurley just really hit it off with LeBron? It would mm -hmm. work, right? I thought Darvin Ham hit it off with LeBron at first. I, uh, yeah. you, you know, but I don't know, man. I think winning and losing has a lot to do with it, truthfully, because if you're not winning and then you're in a system to where you're not you're not being productive and, you know, practices aren't what you think they're going to be in the system, the offensive system and defensive system isn't there. I don't care who you are. You know, but ultimately, you have to have a relationship with your best player because you know who the first one to go is not going to be that player, especially in a guy like LeBron who's, you know, you probably won't have to worry about for like a year, maybe two at most. And I, I truly believe that once LeBron leaves, they're, they're going to go into a rebuild situation. You know, I don't know, you know, how many years left on AD contract, but I really truly think that they'll probably look to move on from him. From him. Let, let, I, was th I said this earlier. When I saw the story this morning, my first take is, what does it mean for LeBron? But I also thought this. Let's say I own the Lakers. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching Dallas, Luka's 25, Ants, yep. 22. OKC's guys are all t young 20s. Here comes San Antonio, Houston. Wimby. And I'm sitting there thinking... AD's brittle, LeBron's old. Do you think there's, there is something where the Lakers are saying to themselves, listen, we're, we're looking at the West. Forget the Celtics, who got yeah. two guys in their prime. We got one elite player in his prime, and he's an old prime AD because of the injuries. Yeah. That the Lakers are watching the West, and suddenly OKC's better now than we thought, and Minnesota's better than we thought, and Dallas is going nowhere, and, uh, and Minnesota's going, and Denver's going. And they're looking around going... We, we got the CBA is not going to give you three stars anymore. Those nope. days are over. Nope. That apron, that second apron, you're not bringing three stars. The, the Golden uh -huh. State thing is over. It's over. It, so my takeaway is they look at Dan Hurley and think, we'll give, we'll give LeBron a heads up, but we're going to go in a different direction. It's going to yeah. be an oven, not a microwave. Yeah. That, that feels like a real thing. This could actually lead to a shakeup. That's what I, a paradigm shift. I mean, as soon as this summer. I'm saying, because, like, you put it all in perspective. When I look at these other teams, the Lakers are not a championship. Not no way. You got to start building these assets up because another team, you in Memphis, Memphis, you didn't mention them. Nope. You didn't mention Sac New Orleans. Sacramento. Sacramento. The league is shifting. If you can get something for AD or LeBron that's significant to draft fast forward capital, your yeah. draft capital that can fast forward your – your future to where everybody's happy, I think you got to do it. I, I also think here's a possibility. You bring Hurley in if he got it. You don't make a move. You move off D'Angelo Russell. You make some moves. He'll get Rui to play his very best. Yeah. He'll get Austin Reeves to play his best. He'll make it work initially. But then at the trade deadline, and you're like, okay, he's going to come back and say, guys, I'm watching OKC. I'm watching Denver. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're, we're not there. I, mean, I think it could be a, it all feels like it kind of works early, and then they make a big swing at the trade deadline. For a team like, I don't, I don't know if it's the Knicks, I don't know what it is, yeah. but all of a sudden it's a team that's good, but man, AD is, he's the difference. Yeah. If you can get some young assets in, build for the future, bring in Bronny, let him develop under his dad one Where year. Are talking about I mean, yeah, I know. You know, draft Bronny or, or pick him up in free agency, depending on if they draft him or not. Let Bron play with him. See if there's anything out there that can kind of fast forward. Hey, maybe you can get Zion Williams somehow. Maybe they're not high on him because it's, and he's injury prone. I mean, you got to swing for the fence. So something. When, when Brad Stevens was coming in, they moved you and KG. Like yeah. They decided we're going young with Brad Stevens. Uh, did you see it coming? Did you know you were moving? We, did... knew, we knew the writing was on the wall. You knew it. It, it was talk about it. You know, after and you heard season. it? Yes. Yes, I heard it from, from Danny Ainge. We had to sit down all year long. What did he say? He just said it's a possibility that, you know, we can move on and, you know, we'll get some offers. But, you know, he wasn't going to move us to a place we want to be, didn't want to be. So when Brooklyn came up, it was yeah. like, oh, okay, I... 
Bronx, New York. Sure. Into my career, big city. They got a bunch of draft picks, and they, you got a cool city. And, you know, they got two young all-stars over there, so we could probably help get them over the top. That wasn't a bad, that wasn't a bad, that wasn't, I wasn't mad at that. Mm. You've been through this. You've had the college yeah. coach. Yeah. I can't believe Rick the team at 2 in the morning. We practiced at 2 in the morning. We awesome. landed, lost the game, landed. In Boston. In Boston, wherever we was at. We landed, and he said, I'll see y'all at the gym in an hour. Yeah, that was crazy. And Ken, I know Kenny Anderson. Kenny's fine. Oh, man. I didn't play. I didn't play with none of the best. But I'm a rookie. I'm still trying to prove myself. But I'm gonna say, I'm like, all right. I'll see y'all there. <laughs> Shoot, I'll see y'all there. I ain't, I ain't on my second contract. Shoot, I'll see y'all there. I might have been. I'm, I think I probably went straight from the plane to the gym. I didn't even go home. Kenny may have gone on a trip to the Bahamas. He may not yeah. be showing up. Yeah. Paul Pierce. Good thing he's always, man. Always, always. You'll see him on TV. He'll be there game 